Crappy audio is one of the biggest turnoffs when you start watching a video. So today, let's talk about the three ways that you can record better audio for your videos. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back. And if you're new here, I'm Josh and I help businesses grow using video content and marketing. If you're looking for tools, tips, tutorials, and content about making better and more effective videos, click that subscribe button now. All right, so one of the best things about the tips that we have today is two of these are free or almost free. So we're primarily gonna be talking about audio in an indoor environment today, but a lot of these same principles can be applied to recording audio outside as well. One of the biggest problems that I hear in videos is caused by the noise bouncing around the room in which the video is recording in. So when you are talking, the microphone is not only picking up your voice then, but it is picking up as it bounces off everything else in the room. Take for example, the room I'm in now. It is a small room with four concrete walls and a hard concrete ceiling. As I speak, the audio not only is picked up by the microphone, but it also bounces off the wall in front of me, possibly the walls to the side of me, and the ceiling. So what I've done in this room is I've added materials to absorb that sound between my voice and the hard surface. So you probably have blankets or towels laying around that will work perfect for this scenario. In my case, I'm using some cheap moving blankets and some DIY sound panels to stop that sound before it makes it to the hard walls. Now they make some high quality specific sound blankets for problems like these. The problem is they are pretty expensive. They're very heavy and do a very good job of absorbing sound. Now I've opted for some cheap moving blankets here. They don't have near the weight of sound blankets, but they still make a huge impact on the audio. And then I've also incorporated some sound panels. Now specific sound panels like these can run several hundred dollars a piece. These are some DIY sound panels and I'll link the tutorial that I used below, but I made these using towels that I purchased from Goodwill. Now you need to make sure that the materials that you're using are placed strategically in the room that you're using. For example, the sound panels on the back wall right now are probably not having a huge impact in the video because I'm speaking away from them. So in front of me, I have sound blankets on each side that are stopping that audio from going to the wall in front of me and to the walls to the sides of me. Hey guys, while I was editing this, I wanted to add in some of the test shots that I did, but I wanted to explain a little bit about what I did. So I had the camera about four feet away from me, and then I recorded a clip with both the sound material in the room and then with it removed. But I wanted to explain the Shure SM58, the NTG2, and the lav mics were all a lot closer than the onboard microphone, the iPhone, the Rode video mic, and the Tackstar mic. So I wanted you guys to know that up front. Um, you can tell some big differences in the sound um, between these different mics, and that does account for some of it. Um, these are just for you to make your own opinion about. I'm not gonna comment on the tests themselves. Um, so you can make your own determination um, from what you hear here in the video. Thanks. This is a reference shot. So I have removed all of the uh, sound absorption material in front of me and behind me. There is still some sound absorption material on the ceiling that I'm unable to remove. This is the Shure SM58 recording to the Zoom F4. This is the Shure SM58 recording to the Zoom F4. This audio is from my Shure SM58. This audio is from my Shure SM58. This is the Rode video mic recording to the A7 III. This is the Rode video mic recording to the A7 III. This audio is from the Rode video mic. This audio is from the Rode video mic mounted on the A7 III. This is the A7 III onboard microphone. This is the A7 III onboard microphone. This audio is from the Sony A7 III built-in mic. This audio is from the Sony A7 III built-in mic. This is the Deity Lav mic recording to the Tascam DR10. This is the Deity Lav mic recording to the Tascam DR10. This audio is the Deity Lav mic with the Tascam DR10 recorder. This audio is the Deity Lav mic with the Tascam DR10 recorder. 
Now this room has carpet in it, so I typically don't treat the floor. But if you're recording in a room that has a hard floor surface such as tile or hardwood floor, simply put a blanket or an old comforter down on the floor. And that will help absorb some of the sound before it bounces off the floor. Now one of the things that gets skipped the most when treating a room for sound is a table or desk that you're sitting at while you're recording the video. Now it's not always possible to treat that piece of furniture as it may be in your video shot, but when I'm shooting video at the desk and the desk isn't in the shot itself, I will place a towel over the desk to help absorb some of that sound. Okay, now that you've got your environment treated and under control, let's talk about mic placement. In general, the microphone needs to be as close as possible to you when you're recording audio. This is important for two separate reasons. One is the mic isn't only picking up your voice, it's also picking up all of the other sounds around you. So the closer that microphone is to your voice, the louder your voice will be compared to those other sounds. Secondly, when a microphone captures our voice, it turns it into a signal and that signal needs to be amplified to bring it up to a level that we hear in their videos. Now, if you're recording a video with a microphone that is five feet away from you versus a microphone that is one foot away from you, the closer microphone will have a louder volume to start with. Therefore, it will need less amplification afterwards to bring it to the proper level. Less amplification means less noise. This is recorded with the microphone approximately one foot from my mouth. This is recorded with the microphone approximately one foot from my mouth. This is recorded with the microphone approximately two feet from my mouth. This is recorded with the microphone approximately two feet from my mouth. This is recorded with the microphone approximately four feet from my mouth. This is recorded with the microphone approximately four feet from my mouth. Now amplification can be added in a couple of different ways, whether that be in your camera or in your phone or even in a piece of software after the fact. Now in this example here, I'm using a microphone that's placed just above me right out of frame and recording that signal into a Zoom F4 recorder to try to get the cleanest signal possible. Another great example of this is if you've ever watched a video of a podcast being recorded, typically the speakers will always have the microphone right next to their mouth. That helps with both of these issues. The third thing you can do to record better audio is to choose the right microphone. So if you're recording with a phone or DSLR, even though they have a built-in microphone, they're just bad. They aren't designed to produce high quality audio. So when it comes to choosing a mic, there are tons of choices out there. From lavalier mics to shotgun mics, super cardioid, cardioid, omnidirectional. So which is the right microphone for you? If you're shooting videos with an iPhone or DSLR and you're just standing or sitting in front of the camera, a lavalier microphone is a good choice. Now, lavalier microphones can come on a couple different varieties, including wired or wireless. Uh, because of the type of videos that I normally shoot, I prefer a wired mic. One of my favorite wired mics is the Deity V-Lav microphone. Now, what's really good about this is it's a high quality microphone, around 50 bucks, um, but it either comes with, I think, a 15 or 20 foot cord. So you can clip this on you and still have plenty of cord to plug it into the camera in front of you and record that audio directly into the camera. Now, if you're using an external microphone with a smartphone, you will need a TRS to TRRS adapter. I've listed a few in the description below. Now, sometimes a wired microphone isn't always the best choice. One of the most popular options for a wireless microphone system is the Rode Wireless Mic Go. Now, wireless microphones come in two different varieties. Depending on whether they operate in a licensed frequency range or an unlicensed frequency range, Wireless mics like the Rode one operate at a 2.4 gigahertz frequency. Now, that may sound familiar because a large amount of Wi-Fi also operates at the 2.4 gigahertz frequency. Now, this is an unlicensed frequency, so anything can use that frequency. That can be a problem if there are a lot of different devices using that same frequency while you're trying to use that Rode wireless system. 
some higher end microphones will operate in a licensed frequency range. So basically the manufacturer has paid a license to produce a product that will operate within this frequency. So there will not be a lot of other devices that are operating in that range, but there still is a chance to get some interference. My biggest recommendation when it comes to a wireless system is that you should be able to listen to the audio as it's being recorded. Now, typically that's not possible when you're recording yourself like I do, so that's why I use a wired system. Sometimes the wireless system can have drops or other noises that are introduced into the audio that you won't hear until you go in to edit your video. Now, if you're moving around a lot or don't wanna wear a lavalier microphone, shotgun microphones are the best alternative. Shotgun mics are made for all different cameras and they come in different sizes, different quality range, from probably $20 up to several thousand dollars for high-end shotgun microphones. One popular choice for smartphones is the Rode Video Micro. Now I think this microphone's around $169 and comes with the correct adapter for a smartphone and can clip to the phone itself. Now for DSLR cameras, there's lots of options for shotgun microphones. Some start out as cheap as $20, all the way up to the $300 Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. There's also a very interesting option from Shure that instead of recording the audio in your camera, actually records the audio in the microphone. So I'll link that one below as well. One thing to note about the shotgun microphones for DSLRs, just because they can be mounted to your camera doesn't mean that they should be. Mounting them on a boom pole like this microphone here can bring that microphone a lot closer to you and really improve the sound quality that you get out of it. Now, I don't wanna to get too technical with this video, but typically the lavalier microphones on the lower end of the spectrum will be omnidirectional. They'll pick up audio from all around it. Now, shotgun microphones are gonna come with a pickup pattern that's called cardioid or supercardioid. What this means is they're gonna pick up audio primarily from the front of the microphone, and noise that comes in from the back and from the sides is gonna be attenuated. The problem is when you use these microphones in a highly reflective room, especially small ones that are untreated, that microphone is gonna be picking up your voice going into the mic, and then it's also gonna quickly pick up your voice bouncing off the walls and hard surfaces around you. This can give those microphones a lot of trouble in environments like that. So if you use those in rooms with hard surfaces, especially small ones, make sure you're using some kind of treatment to help get the best quality out of that mic. First up, this audio is from my iPhone 8 Plus. First up, this audio is from my iPhone 8 Plus. This audio is from the Sony a7 III built-in mic. This audio is from the Sony a7 III built-in mic. This audio is from the a7 III built-in mic. This audio is from my Tacstar mic. This audio is from my Tacstar mic. This audio is from the Rode video mic. This audio is from the Rode video mic. This audio is from the Rode video mic mounted on the A7 III. This audio is from my Deity Lav plugged directly into my A7 III. This audio is from my Deity Lav plugged into my Sony A7 III. This audio is from my Deity Lav plugged into my A7 III. This audio is from my Kaztam DR10L. This audio is from my Tascam DR10L. This audio is the Deity Lav mic with the Tascam recorder. This audio is the Deity Lav mic with the Tascam DR10 recorder. This audio is the Deity Lav mic with the Tascam DR10 recorder. This audio is from the Rode NTG2. This audio is from the Rode NTG2. This audio is from the Rode NTG2. This audio is from my Shure SM58 mounted above my head. This audio is from my Shure SM58. This audio is from my Shure SM58. Bonus tip. Now, 
When you record the audio through the microphone, it goes into your camera or smartphone and goes through a pre-amplifier to boost that volume level. Now it's known that phones and cameras typically don't have the best pre-amplifiers built into them. Now the next step up is to pair a high quality recorder like the Zoom H5 or the Tascam DR60 Mark II, both linked below, with an XLR microphone like the Rode NTG12345 or a high quality Sennheiser shotgun microphone. The setup that I'm currently using is actually a Shure SM58 paired with a Zoom F4 recorder. Now recording high quality audio isn't the be all to great video. Check out my video here on quality versus quantity to hear my opinion on whether high quality production or producing more content is more important. If you're looking for more tips on growing your business with video, hit that subscribe button.